today we take every single mainline series Pokemon game and rank them in order from best to worst. What is up everybody, Pokestan here, and welcome back to a another new video for you, you all. And today, we will be taking every single mainline series Pokemon game, all the way from Red and Blue, all the way here to Sword and Shield. And we're going to be ranking them in order, in my own personal order, uh, ranked from best to worst, of course. Now, obvious viewer discretion is advised, this list is opinionated, and I don't mean to offend anyone with uh, with any of these rankings, of course. These are just based on my own opinions and experiences with each and every single one of these games. So this is the template that we will be using for today's tier list. Uh, I will have this linked down in, in the description below if, if you guys want to share me your, your own tier lists. Uh, you know, share them with me on Twitter at Pokesan or Instagram at Pokesan. Doesn't really matter either way. I'll check them out regardless. Hey. Send me your opinion and give me your two cents on how you think these Pokemon should, these Pokemon games should be ranked in your own opinion. Uh, because I would really like to see that. And if you guys are excited to see my own opinion and how I rank these games, uh, then please click that like button as it's greatly appreciated. And I will say, I'm very happy that we recently hit 100 subscribers on the channel. Thank you guys so much for that. I'll talk, I'll talk more about that at the end of the video because you guys are here with the tier list, right? So let's get on with it. Okay, so how this video is going to work is that we're going to go by chronological order in order of, the of when the games came out. Alright, so starting off, red and blue. Where do I put these? Where do I put these? I'm just gonna put them in a random place just to separate them for now. I feel like I should also put yellow in there just cause yellow is Kanto Gen 1, yes? So where would I put these? I will say being the first games in the entire Pokemon franchise, these do have a sort of weight to them, you know? They started what we know now as Pokemon and nothing could have ever happened. The rest of these games could not have happened without red, blue, yellow, or green, if you if you live in Japan, of course. So, I feel like in that right, it does deserve that one point. But my god, the story, Team Rocket, as basic as it could be, was just stealing Pokemon, dominate the world. Yeah, you know, every evil gang plot there ever will be in the existence of anything. And also the gameplay, you know about the gameplay, Alakazam, Mewtwo, completely wrecks shop. All right, any fast mod crits easy. It's stupid rap. Okay, look, red, blue, yellow. As as much as you know, I'm as much respect as I can give it is is has a lot of fault. <laughs> I'm not going to lie because uh, obviously, being the first games, nothing was really established besides Pokemon. The idea of Pokemon itself. So in that right, I think I'm gonna put them at a. Mm, no, I'd probably leave them at C. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> There's so many problems with this game. Obviously, it is what kickstarted the entire series, but my god, were there a lot of problems. So in that rate, I have to put them at C, just based on story, based on music, based on gameplay. I guess in terms of memorability, I put I put them at a B, but no, I put them at a C. Personally, me personally, me personally. Moving on, gold, silver, and crystal. Now this one. I do have a sort of closer relationship to Col Gold, Silver, Crystal because I did play it more than Red and Blue. Red and Blue was cl clunky, but my god, Gold and Silver fixed so many of the problems and it just, it was really nice because Johto is a really cool region. Now, the one thing I can say about Johto as a whole, right, it even spreads over to Heart Gold, Silver, but we won't get there yet for a little bit, is that level scaling is weird because you go straight, you go from Morty's Gym you hit Chuck, and then you hit uh, Jasmine. Chuck has like mid-30s, I think, or like early 30s. Jasmine has mid-30s, and then you go to and then you go to Price. Yes, the seventh gym leader. Uh, he has like late 30s, and then right after that, you have a little mission. By the way, spoiler alert, but that's pretty obvious. But uh, you have a little mission that you have to go back to Goldenrod to fight off the Team Rocket grunts. Yes, most of them have level 17, 18 mons. It's bad. 
it makes no sense. And then the admins right afterwards are just spiked right up to where you were supposed to be at. It makes no sense. On top of that, Poma League is like mid 40s to, to 50. It makes no sense on top of that. Then you go to Kanto, and the level spiking is weird because on the SS Aqua, you got level 30s. But the gym leaders are level 40-ish to, to, to 50. And then you go fight Red. It's level 60 to 70. The levels do not make sense. But given what they're worth, music is memorable as hell. I love most of the- I love Gold Silver Crystal soundtrack. National Park? Banger. Uh, let's see. Goldenrod? Banger. Olivine City? Banger. Battle vs. Red? Banger. Chanto Gym Leader theme? Banger. Locales? So memorable. Okay, you got- you got Bell Tower. Rural Islands. You get, what, what, what else you got? Mount Silver. I think in that right, I will put them in an A. Even now, I enjoy listening to the 8-bit renditions of, of these uh, songs, because they're so good. I cannot get that enough. They're so good. I think the theme moving forward is that usually whatever game I put, if it's a trio of games, if it's a trio set of games, then the two older ones will naturally be on the tier they are, but- and then the definitive edition is going to be at the- like, one tier above. So, because of that, we're gonna put Gold Silver in B, and we're gonna put Crystal in A. Because Crystal is just Gold and Silver, but much better. Alright, next. We have third generation, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Huh, <laughs> this is weird. Um, I will say though, Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, they all stack up to this day. Even with Oras out, they still are really good games to play. Uh, let's see. Soundtrack. Oh, can I even say anything about the soundtrack? Mount Pyre. Let's see. Gym Leader theme. That's such a banger. Versus Steven. Versus... Oh my... G uh, yeah, so many good... So many good themes. Music is so good. I still listen to a lot of the soundtrack to this day. Verdant Turf Town. That theme is underrated as hell. Okay, not even capping. No cap whatsoever. Sutopolis! Ugh, it's so good. Soundtrack is so good. Gameplay, this is where they This is where they brought in double battles. I don't really care. I mean, I guess it, it brought on VGC. So that is something. But in terms of locales, memorable ones? I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, S Sky Pillar, but that was only Emerald. Um, Origin Cave. Bro, Mount Chimney? Oh, so, it's so memorable. It still feels like I'm running through the region. And hearing all the trumpets in the music, it's so good. Uh, so honestly, I would put these up in A. And then Emerald is, uh, I don't know, man. This is a bit of a weird case, because Gen 3, is, it's great. But it's not exactly, it doesn't have a soft spot for me, you know? I'd probably put all three games in A tier. Because they're still really good to this day. I, I don't know, man. It does it it does ring so many bells for me, but it's it's not exactly it, it doesn't hit. You know, it, it doesn't hit in the right place. Uh, now we move on to Fire Red Leaf Green, because these are also third generation. They're basically red and blue, but better. So, uh, better. What can I say? It's red and blue, but better. What do you want me to say? It's it's literally just that. Yeah. I mean, it's the same region, it's better, Yeah, These are really good games, but I wouldn't put them over Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. I would not. For as stupid as the story is in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, uh, actually no, I'm gonna make a few changes here. I'm gonna put Ruby, and Sapphire here, Emerald is A tier though. Emerald is A tier because it has the definitive story that really shapes things all together. You know, it really, it really shapes things all together, which is really good, which makes it somewhat okay for, in terms of story, but story is still dumb. I mean, one side wants more land, one side wants more water, you can't- what, what the hell is that kind of story? I don't know. All for convenience sake. Now, the big bomb. Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Music, so memorable. Route 209, um, Orberg City, oh, like, I didn't really think much of Orberg City's theme until recently, but man, it hits, it hits hard. <laughs> Jubilife City, Pokemon Center Night theme, Canalave City, Sunny Shore City. They're so good. It's obviously, Battle versus Cynthia. It's easy. It's so good. Diamond Pearl A. All right, Platinum S tier. Goated. Easy. Bro, Platinum is my first Pokemon game. So this is really biased, but that was that was to be expected because this is opinionated after all. But man, Platinum it just hits right. I can't I can't fault 
Platinum just hits super right, and uh, it just uh, brings back so many memories. Going through a Veilstone City gym, like punching the punching bags, and then getting to Maylene. Oh, so good. Mount Coronet, though. Mount Coronet theme is probably damn goaded, and uh, like just out of the entire Pokemon franchise, bro. You cannot go wrong with that theme. Jubilife Life City, so memorable for all the for all the people that just just started on their new Pokemon journey. I have restarted Platinum plenty of times, so I would know. I can go on and on about this game for for literal days. All right, if you want me to, then I will. And hey, if you want me to, click that like button because it shows me that you want to see it, more Pokemon, uh, like Sinnoh related content, and I am all for that because I. I'm a Sinnoh main, bro. I'm a Sinnoh main. The only reason why I would put Platinum above Diamond Pearl is, of course, because it is the definitive edition, and also, it the story makes a little bit more sense, uh, and it's also you get a little more insight into these into these characters that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten in Diamond Pearl. Like uh, Giratina, you get more insight into Dialga Palkia, their purpose, and 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 Giratina as a whole. Yeah. Moving on to the fifth generation. Whoa. Chill. Come on, man. Chill. So, hi. Editing me here. Uh, so by the time this whole video was recorded, the original file turned out to be about 45 minutes. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut this video into two parts, and that's why I'm also splitting these, uh, this entire video into four generations each, so that way you guys don't feel overwhelmed with the amount of content in this video, or these, these videos, rather. But with all that said, hope you guys did enjoy this video, and if you did, please make sure to give this video a like, and also subscribe to the channel, because as this metric says right here, uh, yeah, no, most of you aren't even subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Subscribe, please. It would help me a lot if you guys did do that. Uh, uh, and yeah, give the video a like if you did enjoy the video. But um, I will see you guys back here for part two in uh, probably a few days. Uh, hopefully, anyways. <laughs> so, with all that said, uh, thank you guys so much for watching once again. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.